Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Mediocre Takes podcast. Today, we are going to continue ranking all of our shows, movies, pilots, short films we've watched. And today, we're going to be talking about the movies we watched. This is for our two year anniversary. So thank us in the comments for posting or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. And hey, guys, if you want to check out a, a visual of how we ranked all of these, we will have a tier maker list on our Instagram and um, Blue Sky. So check us out. So yeah, let's just get started with ranking all the movies. So the first movie we're going to be talking about is Happiest Season. This one I actually ended up ranking higher than I expected, despite me not being too into awkward humor and awkward moments, which this movie is full of them. I still found it to be pretty worth watching and still pretty funny. I still don't like how the two love interests ended up together in the end or how they treated each other throughout the movie. So yeah, that that's kind of like a, a downside to this movie. But I still think the story is pretty important and pretty good overall. And for that, I ranked it a B. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. I also ranked this a B. I'm surprised. I am also surprised that you did not rank this lower. I remember you being a hater. Okay. Can I just say haters can change their mind? Okay. 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 Sure. I mean, I could never. But I'm not always a hater. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not like that. Well, good and, for you. Yeah good for me i'm glad that you're able to to change and grow personally N me no i think i become more of a hater actually but yeah i stand by everything i said in our review i am still team harper i will defend her forever i, I yes she made mistakes but it, listen it takes two to tango so i feel like a lot of people aren't shitting on i forgot her name the other girl uh harper's girlfriend uh i feel like not enough people shit on her the blonde yes. one yeah, the blonde one. <laughs> you know, in a lesbian relationship, you have a brunette and a blonde. <laughs> Always. There are two genders, brunette or blonde. <laughs> okay, our next movie, Saving Face. Another lesbian film. I ranked this an A. Watching Saving Face was like finding a needle in a haystack. It's one of the very few lesbian films that feels like it was written by someone who doesn't hate lesbians. Just because, I don't know, I feel like uh, a lot of lesbian films aren't created for the lesbian consumption. I really loved how it was sort of like showing us the life of an Asian lesbian and showing like the struggles that she experienced not only because she's a lesbian but also because she is Asian and how those two identities uh, interact and clash with each other especially her relationship with her mother and just like her whole family and community in general. Well I also ranked this an A. This is a really good movie. The ending made me really happy and despite this being a comedy that I honestly didn't really find that funny I still like pretty much every other aspect of the movie. The mother in this movie was a bit unlikable at the beginning though I I am glad to see her character growth at the end. Also, if there is one funny part that I actually found funny, it's when the main character uh, crashes the wedding. And like that whole scene where um, we figure out who the father is of the mother's child, that was really great as well. And yeah, this is just a really happy lesbian film. Um, It was a bit sad in the middle, but it's just really sweet at the end. And I give this an A. The next movie we're going to talk about is Kajillionaire. So I have a lot of mixed feelings when it comes to this movie. Like I mentioned before, I hate awkward moments and awkward humor in media. And this movie is filled with them just like in Happiest Season. The main reason I ranked these two pieces of media differently is because despite Condillionaire having awkward humor, it's way more serious and I didn't like the tone of it overall. This movie is just not for me and that's okay. So I ended up ranking this a C. I will say I do think this is an important movie and I wish more people would watch it because of that. Yeah, I rank this a B. I also do think this is a very important movie. It made me cry, personally, as someone with um parental issues. It did make me cry. I just think this was a very beautiful movie, um, both like cinematically and just like with the story they were telling. I, I think the, the reasons why I love this is also the reason why I don't think I would necessarily come back to it as often as I would other films. Because it's sort of, the the, the core message of this is very much like, you know, witnessing someone with horrible parents interact with someone who seems like they have a lot of love to give and, and, and how that person just doesn't know what to do with that. It's like, it's a perfect bittersweet story, I guess I would say, especially that ending. I think that the epitome of that ending is bittersweet. Okay, our next movie, Complete 180, Trick or Treat Scooby-Doo. I, sadly, I ranked this a D. 
I think really the only things I loved from this film was lesbian Velma and Trevor. And we all know how I feel about how they treated Trevor in this movie. They did him so dirty and I just, I cannot get over that. I also think that the pacing was really bad. I did sense watching this, I did watch some of the Scooby-Doo movies that I haven't seen before and I sort of feel like they, they all have that same pacing issue where it just feels like we're getting scenes where we don't necessarily need and there are scenes that go on for way too long for no reason and that was something that was a huge issue with this movie. But yeah, I would just say that this 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 movie had a lot of potential and I don't think they're going to continue with the lesbian Velma thing, which I wish they would because it's true, she's a lesbian, but I just don't think we're going to get that, which makes me kind of upset at this film even more that it would sort of get my hopes high. I know I had a few problems with this movie when I first reviewed it, but I actually like this movie looking back on it. It's a bit different compared to other Scooby-Doo movies and TV shows, but it's still pretty decent overall. Like the comedy is a bit different and so is I think the animation a bit different as well. I still enjoyed it despite that. I will say the ending is way too long, like it took so long for the movie to end and I hated that part. And I also hated how they treated a certain character aka Trevor, if you know you know. So I ended up ranking this a B. Okay, the next movie is The Incredibly True Adventure of Two Girls in Love. This movie is a weird one. There's this age gap between the main character and another lesbian character, and that made me feel very gross. However, everything else was pretty good. I did find this movie to be kind of forgettable overall, and that still rings true today. But I really liked that at the end we learned that this movie is actually about the creator's first love, and it added a lot to the story in my opinion. It just really made sense to me, and I really liked that part. But yeah, I also really liked the ending between um, the two main characters. That was also really good. And I ended up bringing this a C. Okay, this is another needle in a haystack lesbian film. I, I I am so glad that we've like reviewed four lesbian films now. All of them have been like fairly good. And by fairly good, I mean the ending wasn't horrible and the lesbians live, which in, in, in lesbian filmography, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, I just think I, I also like the vibe of this. This movie was very much 90s. Like you watch this and you're like, oh, that's the 90s. And I felt like there was a certain charm to that. Yeah, it was just, I don't know. I feel like this was such a, an easy watch as well. Like there are a couple heavy moments, but I think overall, this is just something that I think Honestly, everyone should watch. I don't think there's necessarily anything bad in it other than the weird age gap relationship. And I also just like, I also really loved the ending and how everyone just like showed up at their door. The characters that I loved the most at the end were the three girls who were um, one of the main character's friends who were there just because they're nosy. And I ranked it a B. Okay, our next movie, 1978's Halloween. You didn't like this one, Marco, if I remember. I also think I didn't talk very positively about this in my review. I ranked this an S purely out of nostalgia. When I first watched this as a kid, I thought this was the coolest scary movie I've ever seen and probably shouldn't have watched because I was way too young. As an adult, I think I don't like it just because Jason isn't a character. Like, he's he's a person. What Okay, what makes Jason one of the scariest uh, horror bad guys is the fact that he's just a guy like there's nothing supernatural about him he's not some monster he's not some weird like demon or devil or anything he's just some guy and fun fact guys do really horrible things in the world so i think that just makes this movie much more unnerving for me and it makes me not want to watch it or go back to it so i'm base i'm i'm very much ranking this off of nostalgia and being like yes this is s tier even though now i i i don't think i'd rank it that high just because it makes me feel like nauseous and scared in a way that i just don't want to interact with it Okay, this movie, again, is not my thing. I don't like horror, and though this movie was trying to be serious, at times it felt a bit too goofy. Some examples being when the murderer was a child and murdered a girl. Like, the way he stabbed her just felt really goofy. I remember mentioning that before. It just looked weird. I know it's a bit nitpicky, but I have to be honest here. And I also found it a bit goofy how the main character's friends talked, and the main character as well. It's just how people talked in the 70s. No, but like... Remember the scene where like they were talking about the dumb dog or like that scene where one of the girls shows shows like her boobs to her boyfriend to her to the murderer who has a mask on like it just it just felt weird <laughs> and goofy at those points. I'm I'm going to defend myself here. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah. Yeah. I just did not like this film. It's just not my thing. 
and I gave this a D. So the next movie is The Watermelon Woman. I think this is a really important movie, but it's not one that's really stuck to me after watching, which is strange because at first I felt like I really liked it. I think it's important that the director, Cheryl Dunier, created this fake history of The Watermelon Woman because there was no real history written down about Black people that she could find, like like this character. I think it's an important movie. Do I think it's the best movie? No. For that, I think I'm going to give this a C. Okay, I also gave this a C. I think the the coolest thing about this film was that it was created in the first place. This had the first black lesbian director, which is really cool. I just think my main issue was that I became much more interested in the subplot of Cheryl investigating the watermelon woman instead of the the main plot, which is, I, I don't know, Cheryl is simping for some white woman and and this weird subtext where like feminine black women are evil or something. Our next movie is Nimona. I gave this a C. All I have to say is the comic was better. I think the only scenes I liked from this was Godzilla Nimona and the uh, Nimona flashback that we got. The rest was, I don't know, it was kind of shit, and I didn't like it. Okay, I feel like I'll have to rank this movie higher if I hadn't read the source comic material after watching the movie. I think the Mona, the movie version, has its merits, but I really love the characters in the original graphic novel. Also, I'm not a big fan of Ballister and Golden Loin being love interests in general, like in the comic or in the movie. I'm just not a fan of it. Um, They should have never gone back together. Nimona is really the shining moment in this movie. She she is by far the best thing that could have happened in this movie. And it's she's pretty much the only thing I liked about this movie because Ballister, again, he did not stand up for Nimona like he did in the comic, which was really annoying. So yeah, I give this a B. And the last movie we're going to be talking about is actually a trilogy, and that's the Fear Street trilogy. We're going to rank this all as one thing because that's why I decided to do. So despite this trilogy being horror, I still really ended up enjoying it. The ending was so sweet because the two lesbians actually ended up surviving, which according to Mal is really rare in horror films. I would think the story itself is pretty good as well, and I think the second movie in this trilogy might be my favorite overall. So yeah, I ranked this a B. This trilogy was my obsession for months. I just, I love the plot. I love the twists and turns and how the story unravels through like flashbacks. In in the way that the the story is told, it made me want to rewatch all of the movies so I can be like, "Oh my god, it's been there the whole time." I just think it's just ah, it's just an amazing trilogy. Uh I ranked it an S. Also, I have never read an R.L. Stein book, and I'm going to keep it that way. I know that this was based off of the R.L. Stein Fear Street novels. Never never read one, never will. Is he problematic? Is that why? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he, he's probably a white man, so I'm assuming so. He is. Uh, he's probably, probably has some controversial opinions. I've never heard them before, but that's also because this is the only thing from him that I've interacted with. Anyways, you guys, that's our rankings of every movie we've watched and reviewed so far on this podcast. If you want to send us a voice message on Spotify, if you want to send us, if you want to send a voice message, if you want to send us a voice <laughs> Mal, don't laugh. If you want to send us a voice message on Spotify for podcasters, there'll be in the description to do so below. That's our Instagram and Blue Sky is at MidTakesPod. We also have a TikTok at the MidTakesPod, and we also have a YouTube channel at the Mediocre Takes Podcast. And that's everything, so goodbye. I'm sorry we- for laughing at you. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs>